Bible said Mary had a room. And you mean to tell me, say, if them pitch and tent in a primary, or in my gate, and all comfort dry, and, and dear, I'm sick, I get, and we are come together, we pull the world. We pull the world. We pull the world. We need not come in together. As is it can say, come, bone touch bone. Seniors touch seniors. Hallelujah. We need not come in together. Hallelujah. But when we come together with the one of God, we get the double portion. I need another touch from the Lord to carry on my journey on. Oh, praise the Lord. And when the anointing comes, oh, glory to God. God work in the church. And when it, and when it pleases you, He gives gifts to me. Then we raise the prophetess in the church. You know, I feel promise a part of you from the Lord. You know, I feel for a pastor, everybody. Hallelujah. To hear from the Lord. Amen. God. Amen. Give his gifts to the church. So may God help us greatly. Hallelujah. 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 The church sits so quiet. We sit so quiet. Time out to come out of the church now. Come out of the building. Praise God. Go to 10 9. How do you this? We see people are coming to church now. And you are coming 11, 12 o'clock. You know what day is? We go to Kingston, you remember? Go to that street meeting. From early morning. We are going to come 5 o'clock. Go to that street meeting. And come back to Sabbath school. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, say praise God, the man. Say praise Him. Say praise Him. Give Him a praise, man. Get up on your feet and praise him. Give God the praise. Give him the glory. Oh, hallelujah. Give him the praise, man. Give him the praise. 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 So as Pastor like to say, if the church mock our people and our pure cold soul, it make no sense. Peter said, we are what? Light the stone. Bring the past to each other. Tell the church back. I ain't no sin about you. I'm not going to give you a You're not giving a soul. You're not sin. You're not in that world. It's a dead church. It's a dead church. Without the signs. Without the signs. Following the believer. It's a dead church. No matter your crowd. No matter the amount of money, no matter what you have, oh glory to God. But if the signs are not following the church, it's at the church. Hallelujah! 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 Glory to God. So we we talk every day. So I was born for the kingdom. Praise God. So God help us. I said, I run, I said, God, I go on what? Then close our bodies. God, I come the right time. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Give me that one, Bishop. Praise the Lord. Praise and having something here, brethren, the church is growing. Because earlier on, when this church started, we didn't have so many teachers, and we have a lot of persons now with Paul calling. But at the same time, at the same time, we are not effective. Are you in agreement with me? Amen. We have more learned people now, brother, than before. You agree with me, Sister John. You agree with me, Pastor Davis. So the church should be moving on in a better way. 
You know that we are dormant in many, many ways. Our behavior, our, our decor, just about everything about us. We, we sometimes call like we be a Like we don't understand our calling, brethren. So we need to be advanced. Amen? But there must be a change. Are you in agreement with me? The sister asks the question, is the church growing mightily like back then? What is the hindrance? And if we should have start talk, all of us we in the balance, from the top to the bottom, without any apology, and we fall wanting Pastor Davis. When the COVID virus just came out, it was effective. And it take out a lot of lives. But Granny and I sometimes don't even remember now that COVID exists. So we could like the church, you know, sometimes it's effective, but as we come and we get settled in the church, because it's all right. It's like when you just baptize, you never remember when I just baptized. It's like they say, Jesus, you can't come. No. Because the zeal was there. Yes, but you know, the more the years we spent in the church and you know, we get comfortable. You know Something called the zeal. Caught the zeal. You know, we start to experience problems. Various things steps in. But although there was problems in the church, you see, culture has a lot because culture has a lot to do with it. And from studying the lesson, we can see that the Jerusalem church was okay. Yeah, the Jerusalem church was doing well. The Jerusalem church was doing fine. Yeah, they started out on the right path. Jesus set them on the right footing. But, you know, as the church moved out into what you call now the Gentiles region, Gentiles people don't know Israel God. They serve other God, like that we study about Diana of Ephesus. So each of these cities they go with, they have a God to encounter with. Yes, so you have to get away the people from those teachings and bring them to the teachings of God. If you notice, there were seven churches that were in Asia. And Jesus said to them that he is the one that walk it in the midst of the world known as the candlestick. Yes. And Jesus said, He is the one that walk it in the midst of them. And He holds the seven stars in His hand, which are the seven pastors of the church. But He said He has something against them. So much against them. Because what was happening is that the people were coming, but they were drawing from the church. So instead of the church, the people join from the church, the church join from the city. So whatsoever was going on around in the city was coming into the church. The type of dressing. There are so many Babylonian customs, Gentile customs. That, so the breaking down start. It started a long time. So Jesus has to say to them, say, unless they repent. Because he said, What? We have lost our first love. And if we have lost our first love, we have lost our first love. Amen. Yes. Because these were the words of Jesus. Yes. So we have to get back to the first love. Get back to the things that we used to do first. The song said, Take me back to the dear Lord. To the place where I first received you. When Jacob's son, Reuben, they get him into trouble. And Jacob said, I have to go to God. And when he go to God, God said, go back to the place. Where you first met me. Which was Bethel. God said, go back to Bethel. Go back to Bethel. And so we have a spiritual Bethel to get back to. Not the literal Bethel. But the spiritual better. The place where Jacob yes. found God. Yes. And when he found God, he said, Truly, this is the house of God. Amen. Praise God. Back to 
the church has to go back to Bethel. We have to tear down. Do a good job. We are here no the more. Great as a price. As a garment. Waiting for me. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It will tell you wrong. He was reading, but he did not understand. Not at all. And he said to Philip, explain, explain this. It start, who this it is talking about this man or somebody else. Oh, no. Glory to God. Philip, join him in his chariot. Praise God. Amen. We have to pray and ask God to join us in our chariot. Evangelism will be so. 
so easy. It will just flow. You hear me, Bridget? That time, it don't matter how learned you are or how unlearned you are. Come on. It's not about us, it's about the Christ that lives within us. And if each and every one of us should stand up and talk, even those who came in 10 years ago should talk about the church back then. We said, oh my God, that church was, a, we are coming from a glorious church. It had its fault. But there is nothing that is happening here today that wasn't here back then. When we analyze it, am I correct? But you know what? It could be dealt with because of L O V E. Amen? Amen? Amen, church? Amen, church? Amen, church? Amen, church? We were walking around today and we were greeting and loving. And until we can get the heart in tune, get the right heart attitude that when we reach out to each other, it is from the depth of our heart. And that I hold me back, you know. You know, say that I hold me back. And then man, better free up. Better free up, man. Because you will have the zeal to run back to better. Thank you, brother. Say it, Lord. Out of some stony griefs, better I rise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The servant said, Let me lose myself and find it, Lord, indeed. He said, May our self be fed. As friends see only thee. He said, Though it cause me grief and pain, I will find my life again if I lose myself and find it. Lord indeed. I just want to cap the uh, point here. Uh, as David said, that Jerusalem church was not right. That's the truth. But as uh, the church goes by, you study the history of the church, and you go to different countries to preach. The custom of the people are, are different. So you find that uh, even in Jamaica here now, for instance now, what we believe here, if you go in Africa, the church is here, but does not believe as what the church stands for. Because custom of countries are different. So instead of the minister that carry the gospel, stand upon the true foundation to teach the church of God doctrine. They most of what the, the, the people go along with the same custom. They might yet be in the south. Because in Africa, you have lots of church of God over there. Germans and church of God. Church of God, I went to England and I look and they are on the screen there and say Jerusalem, Church of God in Africa, they've been in the three times this. Alright? And how they dance and how they worship. But you see, because the church of God, it doesn't matter which country the world will go. The Church of God has one standard. There is one standard for the church. So any country in the world will go, you have to teach and preach and bring the people to the one standard, yeah. what the church has. Yeah. But most of the churches scattered all over in different lands. They are not as we today. They do not believe as we today. Because still, the custom of the country, or the world and some pieces, the world take over the church. The world take over the church. You see? So you find that the church water down. Water down. But what the ministers of the gospel supposed to do, it doesn't matter which part of the world you are. 
No matter what country stand upon the true foundation of the Lord. So today, because even sometimes some places in Africa, the people, they are some keepers. When they eat anything, sin, they don't travel. Uh, the custom we may have, they don't have in that. And Lord, they still have Lord of the custom of the, the country, what the country stands for. So you'll find that true, the standard of the church of God is not being maintained. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Bishop, for your comments. At this time, we should have gone in the introduction. Um, in the introduction, we're going to see the elements as stated in the objective coming out. You understand? Um, I'm going to ask Sister Barnes, oh, she's sleeping. Oh, no. Sister Barnes, please to read the introduction. I was going to ask Sister Ives to assist, but she has a baby in her hand. So, Sister Barnes, you can come forward, please, so you can use the mic. Consecration. As in the initial stage, when a family 
group reproduces itself into another group, commemorate it by thanking God in a worship service of gratitude and celebration of the fruits. Follow up. Once the new family group is organized, continue the process of the consolidation stage. Continue, continue motivating the members of the new family group as well as the original one. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Barnes. Praise the Lord. Has she, she um, read the introduction? Um, can anyone state the elements that were identified there? If you have your quarterly, can you identify the elements that are important to, to church growth and reproducing? Can you even name one? Prior, very good. What is the next one? Attitude, very good. What is the next one? Consecration. Selection and training of new leaders, and we have to do follow up. So I think we have gone through the prior already, most of them. <laughs> you understand? Right, and consecration, as, and as Pastor mentioned before, you know, our lives have to be consecrated, and we need to pray and ask God to come in our chariot, and we need to get back to Bethel. You understand now? Attitude now. Can someone explain attitude in your own words? What do you think the compiler is talking when he said attitude? When it's there, remember that the mission includes proclamation of the gospel in all places where possible. Therefore, the attitude expected of leaders should allow the duplication of the family group. What attitude do you think the compiler is talking? When is the attitude? Christ-like attitude? Anybody else? Love. What else? Uh -huh. Respect, very good. What else? Humility, what else? It has to do with um, studying the word of God to present. Right, and we have to have a determination as well. Yes. Remember, we study about Nehemiah, and even when opposition came yes. up against him, he said, What? I'm doing a what? Good work, and I what? Won't come down. So we have to have that. Attitude, that determination, you understand, to carry out um, the work of the Lord so that the church yes. can be established. Right. All on a big mission. I don't touch the other one yet. I don't know how many of you saw the clip with Gina Jennings and this servant man. The attitude towards that study was not good enough. The man did not get his stuff together. And because of that, Gina Jenny just twisted up. The man has the truth, you know. But it's the attitude to deal with and whatever that Gina was trying to twist him with, it was not there. So we have to develop that attitude. Uh, we must learn to stay in studies. It doesn't have to be lesser studies. Lesser study, the preaching, because sometimes while the person is ministering, if it's even one thing, you can't get out of it. Am I correct? The scripture reading, brethren, don't just listen to the entire compilation. Take out something, even a verse. You understand? Or else you cannot evangelize. You will embarrass yourself in evangelism. Oh, God, man. Talk to your sister. Exactly. Talk to your sister. And sometimes, yes. sometimes we have it, we know it, but we don't know how to expound it, how to bring it out. So we need the anointing and the Spirit of God in order to bring it across. That so that so is very important. Yeah, we can know it, you know. 
God be the Bible, but when it comes to impart or divide the word of truth, sharing it with others, oh, we can't do it. You so know how much need. time I preach a good message in my bed? How many just have preached so? How many just have preached so? Come up here, so now you've been out, you've been out, you've been out, you've been out, yes, they're coming, missionary. Look at Daniel, brethren. He could have said, yes, king, because we have the Holy Ghost. We can't, we can't do it. I'm going to tell you. The man said, give me a little time. Why are you in so much years, king? Hold on a little longer, man. Just be a few more days. You know what? The man was going to the bigger man who has all the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding, right attitude to approach because he saw many went and fail because they were the
because many a times, a lot of, you know, the scripture, be hostile towards Jesus. But where Jesus could use power, he used love. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Going into a sinner's house to eat, and they told him that if he was really a prophet, then you would know whose house you're going into. Praise God. But he come to call sinners, not righteous. And you know, there's a lot of doctrines out there. And you know, sometimes you go on YouTube, you listen to various stations, and there is so much coming forth. But you have to know what you have believed. As Paul said, you have to know what manner of doctrine you believe. Because he said what? He said we have what? Many teachers. Many teachers. He said we have many instructors. Many instructors. But he said he has begotten us through one father. So although so many instructors are coming to instruct us in the gospel and teachers, but he said remember this. You have one father. One father in the Lord. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, as we can thank you, Pastor, very vital information there. So, we looked at some of the elements and um, we're going to go into the questions. But before, um, we're also on the selection and training of new leaders. The responsibility of the initial leaders of the family group is to recommend to the pastor, possibly new leaders, who will go through a process of confirmation and training. And after all these elements are done, the five and the last one, we should have follow up. We shouldn't just leave it there when we bring in souls, then we should continue. We should continue to talk to them, pray with them, continue to motivate them. You understand? So they too can go and evangelize and not get discouraged. So when all of these six elements are being exercised in the church, then it is an indication that the church is multiplying Amen. or growth is taking place in the church. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise so Lord. praise the Lord. When we see prayer, attitude, selection and training of new leaders, growth, point, consecration, and follow-up, then we can know if the church is growing. So, persons can make recommendation, teacher. That's what the companion is trying to say. Right? Right. Wants to see somebody is growing, but at the same time, one has to be trained. So all of us, everybody, can put themselves in the place. You understand? Yes. No, I said, boy, you may not be called uh, an evangelist, a preacher, a pastor, a teacher, or whoever. But whichever position start calling you, in, work to the best of your ability. Amen? Amen. Not all teachers, not all preachers, not all evangelists, not all. But the church has to grow. When you see the need for an evangelist, put the evangelists in place. If missionaries, remember we have some missionaries, they are going down now. We need some vibrant one, not for, not for the edification of yourself. And I am an evangelist and I am a missionary and instead of your start work, right, take you over. Don't your very speech I change. Come on! Come on! You are here as Servant of the Lord. I've got no partial. God is not a partial God. That is the reason why Brother White earlier on said, work on your talent. If a one you get, work on your talent, brethren. Peter was before Paul. Am I correct, Pastor? Pastor Tristan. Peter was before Paul. Okay. 
ting ser jo. På alt og alt. Apollos var at tage både en kris kom fra hun. En kris kom fra God, brødren. And we are here. Sometimes when you don't see me in Bulbe, don't worry yourself. And the fact is, it's not to stay one place. That, that's what I was told. Not true. Pastor Davis, back your man. Your Bible man now. We must go, and you know that a pastor is an evangelist? Who didn't know that? Anybody didn't know that a pastor has to work as an evangelist? Come on, come on. Yeah, man, you infantilize the field. The belong there, and why you be swords, then you're not evangelist, and the mission every corner, and bring them. But when you go there, Brother Paul was a great evangelist. Travel higher, wide, higher, lower, wide. Why me? He went on three journeys, three missionary journeys. Huh? Three missionary journeys, man. So come on, man. Everyone in the house of God has got a responsibility. You are an evangelist from the day you were baptized. It only comes with the title. But you are an evangelist. I have a talent working for my Lord. And if I do not use it, I will what? Lose it. Surely lose it. Come on. Put yourself in the place. So when somebody get the title, they were laboring for a long time. Amen, church? But when you come and you have a talent, you know a singer is an evangelist? You know a singer is an evangelist? When that person sing and it touch somebody, no minister, no minister. The person is ministering. person is calling so to that one song. Come on, church of God. Amen. So work on your talent, brethren. No have seen them in the church of God. What did I say? No have seen. I caught you. We always know. The Pastor Davis, all of us are workers together. Workers together. Building up. Building up the kingdom of God. So no feel inferior. I'm not a missionary. I'm an evangelist. I'm a business. I'm so we be here. No oh, man, take up some responsibility. Help. Do your fear share. And God will do the rest. Amen? Work. Work, brethren. And when God ready, you will know what to do. Amen? Missionary. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go. We're going to try to answer two of the questions. Because I think most of the things are going to be Question one. The first followers of Jesus faced different obstacles in continuing to proclaim the gospel of Christ. So prayer was an important part of their evangelizing task. In Acts 4, 23 to 31, identify the main aspects of, of um, the Apostles' Prayer. So the question is, what did they ask the Lord? So you can look at verses 29 and 30. And do you think this could be the same prayer of our church? So in Acts 4, look at verses 29 and 30. And you can answer the question and ask, what did they ask the Lord for? Come on, brethren, take up your Bible, man. I'm looking it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Acts 4. Is that it's the object Bible? According to verses 29 and 30, do you 
What did they ask the Lord? And do you think this could be the same prayer of our church? So verses 29 and 30 states, And now the Lord behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants, that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. So what did they ask the Lord for? I heard, yes, boldness, and what else? Signs, that, that sign and wonders may be done, and also for healing, okay? So, do you think this could be the same prayer for our church? Yes. Huh? Of course, definitely. All right, praise the Lord. Amen. Let's quickly go to question two. I would like to just touch church to our teacher. Yes. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they speak the word of God with boldness. Did the prayer answer church? Yes. So, it should be with us today. Pray and believe. Um, a quick question before we go to question two. I always want to, to ask this question. Um, we, we, we all the time that and they continue steadfast in the apostles doctrine. Uh, praying and going from house to house, breaking of bread um, and having fellowship. Why, why is Breaking of bread important. Why think they were breaking bread? And do you think it was literal bread like loaves of bread? So every time they go, they break, they break bread and eat fish. Do you think? I don't think so. In my opinion, I think that every time they go and break bread, it's talking about food, just as we say, break all the bread of life and so forth. Maybe sometimes they have bread, yes, and fish, right? Or sometimes they cook and, uh, um, and eat other things that are food, not necessarily dough, um, yeah, the, the dough, all right? So why do you think um, the breaking of bread is important? Who wants to answer that quickly? Because Jesus did it, who else? Why do you think bread, we do it all the time. We get revelation that we should break bread and why but why do you think breaking of bread is important? Quickly, so we can go to question two. The oneness. And what else? Break on the plan of the enemy. Well, I think the main purpose of breaking of bread was to keep the fellowship. And that is what we are lacking. Not just to go to house to break down powers of hell. Yeah, it is the key to get the get together and it's right to keep the fellowship. And that is what we are lacking now. We are lacking the fellowship. When we have fellowship, then we don't have time for foolishness. You understand? You understand that the devil won't be able to come in our midst and our thoughts of things begin to happen in the church. When the, once the fellowship is there, once we if we continue, just like the apostles, trust me. It would make a great difference once the fellowship is there. All right. And there is something about food. There is something about food. Even Jesus himself uh, broke bread. Five barley loaves and uh, two fishes. And uh, because of Jesus feeding the multitude, they always glad to follow you now. Amen. Because they love the food. Amen. Come on, talk to me now. Amen. It's a means by which yes, it brings about a coming together. And even though many of them followed, they were still hearing the word for the food. Amen. That was a part of evangelism. Because yes. if you remember, we studied evangelists. A lesson that Jesus, um, when we were studying, I think of the mandate. Yes. It wasn't just the spiritual part. 
And it, the compiler emphasized that some church focus or emphasize the spiritual part, yes. but they forgot the, the spiritual, the physical part, the Amen. body. So even though we are sharing the words that we are witnessing, but the body also needs as evangelists mentioned about Jesus feeding the 5,000. So food is very important. So when we are at church today, at church dismisses, we should be able to go in for our lunches. You understand? Mm -hmm. And that should be even also a part of our ministry, eating together, fellowshipping, because that also brings unity yes. among us. So I think we can look at that aspect of it. I want to give a, I want to give you an ex an experience. I visit a church when I go to America because all of my churches they are upstate and every Sabbath they said you are not Adventist, but their doctrine is Adventist. Comes out the Adventist. But they said they are community Sabbath keeping church, but the teaching is Adventist. The minister is that let me tell you something, brethren. If nothing not join your church, when lunch time, sometimes even some minutes, they know say the messages are short. So you can see one or two people just coming out the road, push the door, and they come and they sit down, take their seat as if they were there from morning. Some come from morning. True. But let me tell you something. When past the prayer, the closing prayer, I tell you, say, and the food nice, really nice. And then topping it off, you know, with the dessert, the ice cream, and the cake. And sometimes as I eat, done, you just everybody I go through the door. But at least, there is a sanctuary there to welcome them in. Amen? It's a means of encouragement, brethren. And one day, thank you, Sister Petrona. Maybe one day, one day, the Bible said, the church never go. We call the food down at the church, then house. And then I'll give them any anything when you see lunch. When you see lunch, brethren, you eat. Any dish. Yankas is a perfect example. Oh, nice. <laughs> For Yankas. Yes, so what they are saying, although they are vegetarian, they prepare chicken. One thing that they have as Bishop would have said, the only person that is not being welcome is the devil. It's only the pork not welcome on the table. Praise the Lord. So That's food good. is very food is important. important. Amen. Spiritual nourishment and water needed in terrain food. Teaching and teaching and 
like the children weren't getting it and she let break time pass and she did not give the children anything to eat. So I went to there and said, Miss so, so aren't you tired from morning you are there? I said, moreover, look at the children. They are hungry. They were cooking beer. They are not going to get the concept. They need their break. I said, give the children their break. They are not going to learn if they are hungry. You understand? So she gave them their break time. Then their break and then even snack. Yes, so food is important. So the care what we can learn and hungry stomach. You understand? Food is vital. Yeah, feed my sheep. Not only with the words. Words, but with food. Yeah. You know everything in the you say you say there's everything. There's a word that aligns with everything on the physical, the spiritual, there's something that aligns with the natural care and balance. Yes, everything aligns. Yeah. So you need the word, you need food. So teacher. We well, have food, we forget the people that must have their time. Well, yes. that is a part of our ministry, so yes. and that will um, yes. that will help in reproduction. Yes. So we, as the body of Christ, then we will have to come together to work out ways in which we can uh, provide yes. that. You understand? Exactly. So, so and that will have to be done in a private meeting. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's quickly go to question, the last question. So we can wrap up. So the superintendent is here. <laughs> uh, question four, quickly. Because most of the questions um, here were came out in the introduction. All right. Spirit, why was the confirmation of faith in Jesus important? In the cities where the gospel, where the gospel was announced, according to Acts 15 and verse 36. Pastor David, can you answer that, please? And what were the results, according to Acts 16 and verse 5? Five. Make a list of actions the church could take to follow up on the work in the family groups. Acts 15, verse 36. 15, F as in 5, Acts 15 and verse 36, and also Acts 16 and the verse 5. If someone maybe can help him with the reading, if you... Pastor. In Acts 15, 36, that what Paul was saying is that now that we have preached on some churches, just not leave them on their own, but let us visit them again to see how they are growing, to see how they are doing. Yes, because that is really needed in the church because they are always be new brethren coming into the church. And each time they come in, different family, different background, different beliefs. Praise God. Just like we are here and maybe every brethren doesn't be baptized. Some may be coming from a first day church. Some may be deep baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God. So, there is a lot of things to go back through. And to see how the church is doing, functioning, improving. Yes, and the bishop is leading. That is why now the bishop has to go around, visit all the churches. Just not to hear that some churches coming up, but to visit them. So, that is one of the things. To, li to be listed, because yeah. you said to list some things. So, visitation. Yeah, that <laughs> is important. Important. Can you list some other things that are important for the follow-up visits? What else? It was a uh, 
scripture that you gave. 16 verse 5. Yeah. Church is established in the faith and increased in numbers daily. So, going back here now, we see that the church was increasing. Because one of the things that you want to make sure is that the church is not backsliding. Praise God. Because maybe if the church is lifted up, it can go into backsliding. Yeah. We can also assign persons, persons dear right. so deacons, missionaries, and so on. Okay, right. Well, we can't know the technological age. Use first time Paul or just to write Church. letters. So we can WhatsApp, video call, Zoom to follow up on what is happening. So those are some of the things. Yes. Because your problems will always arise and there will always have to be, as you say, somebody up in leadership who has to go there because that was how the church started out. When there was a problem, they would go back to the headquarters church at Jerusalem and there they would start out with whatever matter it is to be dealt with. The councils, because every church must have a council. Yes, it must have a council that can sit. Because back then, they have this Sanhedrin council, which was about 70 elders. Yes, so when they have any problem, they will take it to the council. Even when, G, even when God sent Moses down to Egypt, he didn't just pick him up and say, go down to Egypt and tell Pharaoh let my people go. He sent him to the elders. He sent him down there and said, go down there. He said, sit with the elders. Talk with the elders and let them know that I have sent you and you and the elders go to Pharaoh. There's a protocol uh, to follow. To follow. And when that is done, there's supposed to be evidence that things were dealt with accordingly. You know, me today and then the problem is still there and you meet again and the problem is still there. There's supposed to be evidence of change, you understand? And in all, and then when that happens, then the church will grow because we can't grow in turmoil and unsolved issues. You understand? Praise the Lord. And, and um, teacher, I really, really endorse what pastor said. Yeah, right. In the sense that, yes, all over the church of God first one, and I say this with no apology, is in turmoil, in problem. You know why? They leave it to the local church of which it can be dealt with at the local level. But once it reaches a particular point, the elders need to be called in. You understand? Because sometimes these ministers are young and they call, the calling is on dear lives. Yes, no doubt about that. But there are certain things in the doctrine or experiences that they cannot deal with. They might try, and they might feel like they have the know-how, but because it is left year in, year out, day in, dear out, it is being dusted under the carpet. And I think, evangelists, they are still not following the, the, the Bible, because right. if they don't know to deal with it, as we have been studying prior, you understand? Prayer is vital. Before you do anything, you go first yes. in consecration and prayer, yes. and then you come with the unity and the oneness, having the same mind. Yes. You understand? The yes. same mind. Yes. The one vision. Yes. You understand? Wanting to Find see out. the growth of the church. The if you have that, then it yes. won't be a problem. We have to have the same mind. That's right. We cannot be carnal. That's you understand? Right. And as 
um, I was saying, sometimes we say the devil, the devil, but God gave us power. Yes. You understand? Over all powers. Right. You understand? Yes. We have the power. He conquered death and the grave. And yes. he took the key. He, he said, I have overcome the world. Yes. So all power. So the key what if we can admit and see the problem and through love, you know, say, church is staying and at my church and I want church to be back what it used to be you now. How can we let church be back the way it used to be? Come on. So, but because everybody's in step now, like King Nebuchadnezzar. Remember yeah. what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar? Come on. Because God is no respect of person. Amen. You understand? Amen. So if it continues and if God sees fit, because it can continue, so right. if, if there is a people to be saved, something has to be done. And God will have to do what he has to do. Yeah. And we can't stop it. You understand? Because he's not a partial God. So we have to be very careful. Because the same thing is happening every day. And because God not raining down fire and brimstone and things are happening like back in the days, we take it for granted and we continue in the same manner and we should also pay, pay attention anything can happen you know we have to be serious about our souls Amen. we don't come here to stay anything if anything should happen then we should pass we're going to pass up in the same condition no that is not no right. kingdom right so we have to get a grip of ourselves virgin and again you make sure before you close this that vein um, the church become personalized. If we notice now, the church will not belong to God anymore. I am. Uh, it's me. It's about me. No, God is in control. And every power has to be subjected to the higher power. Doesn't matter who we are. Doesn't matter. And I wish Bishop is somewhere around. I think Bishop not did it. You know, God won it. And I think it's about time. No apology for Bishop to visit the other churches. Because when you look at it, many of these churches, loud and clear, they are coming off the foundation gradually, gradually. And what pastor read is not his word, it's the word of God. There should be a follow-up. And not just visiting on evangelists, visit with a purpose. Because I can't say I'm going to visit, you know. I can't visit and just, you know, normal visit. Visit with a purpose. Church on the foundation. We're talking about the other churches and what happened throughout. Come on. Brother Paul was in prison and he heard that the behavior was not right and he took it and he said, In prison, the man was about to be sentenced, Sister Joy. And the man said, A stern letter to the church. Let this not be one name among you. If correct the church, fix the church. So if you cannot go in person, you need to stand up for the call. Hallelujah. 
I think that's going to be a hard task, task though, because that was broken down and wasn't dealt with. <laughs> you understand? So the hearts let loose.
saints of God accept all the greetings in Jesus' name. Amen. Our well, bishop will be giving an address to the New Jersey Convention in short order. But I was waiting for the directive before he takes the mic. And we're asking the brethren just to remain on the inside for, for a few more minutes before we adjourn for lunch. Amen. But in the interim, I will just do the announcement and the reminders until New Jersey is ready for, for our bishop. Praise his name. I just want to remind the church that we thanks in the service for Pastor Emil's mother, Sister Jenkins, will be on the 23rd of this month over in St. Mary. And also our beloved Sister Sharon's son and Sister Ford, Thanksgiving service will be held on the 3rd of July. Remember, I said last week that musician. Remember that I said last week that. Do you have now? Okay. Remember, I said last week that Sister Sharon's son will be at 3 p.m. over in Riversdale. I was going be leaving from here to take the bridge over who wanted to attend, and she's asking for a contribution of a thousand dollars towards the, the fair. And Sister Ford, thanks to the service, will be held right here at 11 a.m. in the morning. And the interment will be done at, at 9 mile at Greenville at the house. Amen. So please bear those reminders. And Sister Brown's father's thanks to the service will be held on the 15th. Sister Brown? On the 17th. The location is yet to be announced, so as I get it, I will pass it on to the church.
Because it's not what I need it to do. Amen. I just got shot. Okay. I apologize to you. Praise God. This is the J-Tone. Amen. Okay, I would like to see all the workers immediately after we adjourn Sabbath school. Workers, I would like to see all the workers. It's about five minutes. And then before we go home this evening, the church, please, I'm begging all of us, there is an impure meeting. Please, I'm begging you, let us remain. It will be a very important meeting, and we all need to know what is happening. We all need to be on board. I am putting things in place with the bishop. So whenever, 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 you never can tell. We need to have the structures in place. We need to reinforce our structures. So I'm asking the church, please do not run away. Amen? I, am, I don't normally beg, but I'm begging all of us to remain. It is our church, and we are in it together. Amen? So I would like to see all the workers immediately after we adjourn and then the church will meet. We'll meet before we all go home. Every member, I'm begging you, still waiting on them for Bishop. Pastor, they're just in scripture. Prevention that is now going on in New Jersey, in the USA. I first want to greet our old pastor, Pastor McCarthy, old pastor of the Assembly in New Jersey at this time. And to all the evangelists of the New Jersey Assembly. Deacons of the New Jersey Assembly. All of the missionaries and also congregation of saints and visitors in the here from New Jersey Assembly. I want to greet also Pastor Edwards from Yankees and also his wife Evangelist Edwards and all the Evangelists from Yankees, Deacon, Missionaries and a congregation of saints from the Yankees Assembly. I also want to greet Pastor Green and also his wife Evangelist, and also Evangelist and Green, and also the deacon of the church in Queens and the Evangelist, I believe it's Evangelist Oswald, so far Deacon Hines, all the missionaries, congregation of saints, friends and loved ones, from the Queen's Assembly. I want to get right back now to Coleman Street Evangelist Mignet. That's the wife of Bishop Mignet for the church in Coleman Street. I hear a while ago the moderator was saying, a powerful woman in the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm very happy for her. She was growing up in my hand from a little girl. And thanks be to God, she's still in the race. So I greet Evangelist Mignet from the Corman Street and also other workers and brethren 
from the corner of the street. Happy Sabbath to you all. I get back to North Carolina. The pastor of the North Carolina Church and the deacon of his young evangelist night all the missionaries and congregation of saints from North Carolina coming soon. Jesus in all his glory. Praise the Lord. Happy one more time that the church is going from strength to strength and is moving according to prophecy. There might be other ministers inviting ones from other assembly. I want to greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Do not want to leave up anybody. Is there? Okay, that's why I didn't ask Pastor. Praise the Lord. I did ask Brother Middle to ask Evangelist McCarthy to highlight me of all the ministers that will be there that I do not leave out nobody. I did ask. I want to greet also Pastor Edwards from Cade Assembly. And if there's any other workers from the Gale Assembly, Jamaica, West Indies, Gale, Church of God of the First Book. Praise the Lord. You have to be careful in greetings because they are time that they leave out someone and they are not well pleased with it. So I always have to make sure that um, I like of everybody that will be there. So as your topic for the convention, come let us build the wall. It's a very important topic, a time like now, an age that we are now in. I'm quite sure you have the preacher or the main speaker for this topic. But I will ask, what is the purpose of a world? In the olden days, most cities were built to protect them and also to keep out enemies. Today, if you purchase a house and it does not have a wall and a gate, the first thing you try to do is to get that in place. So, wall is for protection against enemies. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you remember Jericho had a wall? Hallelujah! So what is your enforce to keep out your enemies? Now, according to Peter, we are like the stones, building up a spiritual house. 
foundation wall. For no other foundation can anyone lay but that which is already laid. Hallelujah. And that's why the apostle Paul declared. Thank you. 